Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. So the other important uh, aspect which we have to know about the uh, single crystal plastic deformation is uh, work hardening behavior. So what is this work hardening? We have now seen that uh, um, in a, as I just mentioned in the beginning, I mean, few lectures back, when we talk about, you know, crystalline plastic deformation, the plasticity is always considered as dislocation mediated plasticity, right? So we have also seen several dislocation uh, characteristics in terms of generation, interaction, multiplication, okay, intersections and dislocation, dislocation, reaction and so on. So all those concepts will come in handy here when we talk about work hard. Okay, so what is that? I'm showing some interesting plot, right? That uh, stress versus strain. Basically, this is a critical result shear stress versus shear strain plot of a single crystal. Okay, let us look at that uh, graph, I mean, plot a little more closely. It, it conveys a lot of information. So, we, will, we have to uh, be very careful in looking at this and then try to understand this is a most fundamental idea. Okay, so what, what does it say? This plot shows something called stage one as the strain increases in the beginning and then there is a steep increase in the stress and then after that it starts slowly coming down. So again, it has got about three uh, stages. Okay, the stage one, stage two and then stage three. Okay, so stage one Okay, it, it is uh, basically um, a, a low work hardening rate. That means uh, the, the, we will see that the dislocation activity is uh, the rate of dislocation, dislocation interaction and the activity is, is low and uh, except that a, a little hardness is changing in the material. And the moment it uh, start going to the stage two, excuse me, the moment it goes to uh, stage two, uh, you can see that uh, the stress increases. Uh, significantly due to uh, multiple slips okay and then it, it goes on and then after some time the moment uh, we start the stage 3 it st starts slowing down and then you, you, you can see that uh, you know uh, in the stage 2 the increase increasing high constant work hardening rate the work hardening rate significantly increases and uh, after some time, it is staying constant, and then after that, it slows down. So, in this, if you if you extend this uh, straight line, then you you appreciate that how much uh, the the decrease in the work hardening rate. You can see that is given by this dashed line. Similarly, the increase in the work hardening rate is also given by this arrow hashed line. Beautifully, it illustrates the how the work hardening rate uh, increases and then decreases. Okay, so now we have to just understand in a single crystal why this happens and, and how do we understand. This is a, a very basic and uh, important fundamental idea which you have to keep in mind to, uh, I mean, extrapolate these ideas to polycrystalline deformation or any other uh, uh, polycrystalline, uh, you know, uh, deformation mechanisms and so on. So the the low hardening rate at stage one, the deformation is associated with the fact that there is an absence of dislocation inter intersections. Okay, so this is belong to this region. So what does it mean? This uh, the key factor to notice: uh, increase in dislocation density 
had long fine slip lines and low strain hardening weight and few dislocation intersections. So, so the, we, have, we have seen that uh, in the dislocation dynamics earlier, or dislocation mechanics, unless the dislocation dislocation uh, interact and then makes the intersections, the formation of, you know, little uh, harder uh, dislocation structures like uh, kink or jog and you know voids and other things are all not going to happen which are all the hard particles i mean they'll act as a hard particle they are not going to happen okay so that means they are all the signatures of high rate of dislocation interaction which is not taking place in the stage one the high strain hardening rate uh, in the stage two is the result of intersection and trapping of dislocation within the crystal. So now we are talking about intersection. That means the dislocation, dislocation start interacting with each other. That means the after the initial glide, that means the dislocate start gliding in a plane, a glide plane without any hindrance. And uh, as the uh, strain goes up, the number of dislocation increases, the number of dislocations per unit area increases and then as a result, now intersection start happening. So the primary signatures of this stage two is dislocation multiplication, activation of new slip systems, formation of sessile and non-moving slip planes, increase in strain and internal stress. You see, uh, these descriptives are very, very important. As you move to a, a second stage of work hardening rate, you, 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 see, you see that complete contrast in the dislocation uh, and uh, microstructural features. If you look at the stage three, the decreasing strain hardening rate uh, is a result of dynamic recovery process occurring simultaneously with the strain hardening. So you see, you have to now remember a strain hardening and then strain softening. We can we can say that opposite word okay there is another word we can use is yes, a dynamic recovery also will act as a strain softening mechanisms you can you can consider it like that to start with we will uh, we will give more importance to all this uh, uh, terminology and uh, we'll get into details as we proceed in the course but then it is easy to remember strain hardening taking place so that means it is uh, getting reduced that means what something opposite to happen that is strain softening okay so here we can uh, consider the dynamic recovery okay it is uh, opposite to strain hardening so that is happening in the stage 3 so what are the uh, primary or key uh, signatures here creation of jogs point defects long and narrow dislocation loops so you know now what is a jog you know what is a point defect or a vacancy, how it is getting generated, okay, interstitials, how it forms. All these descriptors, you have some idea. We have already seen in terms of dislocation reactions. So the dislocation loops and cross slip, cross slip, you know, it's two dislocation, okay, the two dislocations only can uh, undergo this kind of mechanisms. That means it can easily uh, surpass the obstacles through these mechanisms. Okay, and uh, recombination of partials due to high stresses. So the stage three again shows very significant and very different signatures as compared to uh, stage two in terms of dis dislocation behavior. Okay, so the entire stress strain curve for a BCC crystal resembles stage three deformation in FCC crystals. So please understand this single crystal. Uh, deformation behavior what we have seen uh, so far stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 is for phase centered cubic crystal system. Okay. And for an BCC body centered cubic crystal system, the entire curve will look like a stage 3 only. Okay. So that means uh, you, you have very, you know, different kind of work hardening behavior uh, will be exhibited by uh, materials which has BCC crystal system and uh, you know this kind of 
you know work hardening behavior will be exhibited by materials which shows or which has fcc crystal system very important basic understanding so uh, i just use the word uh, dynamic recovery uh, suddenly okay what is recovery let us first see that because we are now denoting the whole area as a decrease due to recovery what is recovery recovery means this generic name refers to a process resulting in a reduction of flow stress so the reduction of flow stress the flow stress is coming down so what why does it comes down because the uh, dislocation annihilation what is dislocation annihilation annihilation we have we have already seen what is dislocation annihilation a positive and negative edge dislocation glide in a same plane which is coming in opposite direction will form a perfect crystal that also we have shown in the dislocation dynamics so this process is a dislocation annihilation so when the activity you know starts with this dislocation annihilation then what do you expect the total number of dislocation density will i mean tot total number of dislocations will come down as a result the density of dislocation itself will be decreasing as you proceed okay that's important uh, aspect and secondly the rearrangement of dislocation into lower energy configurations that means uh, all the energy like see one of one you know one example already we have just seen that uh, how a dislocation will try to align themselves in especially a, a edge dislocation of a similar sign will align one over the other because of the stress fields right we have we have clearly shown how it uh, if it is more than you know 45 degree or less than 45 degree orientation all we have seen so it forms a low angle grain body that means that is a one a classical example of a low energy configuration right so like that so many uh, configurations are possible one of the uh, primary uh, is uh, the cell cell dislocation cell it will form a cells group of cells okay that is also a low energy configuration so it could form a uh, veins of a string a dislocation wall cell all these things are uh, descriptors of uh, low energy configuration of dislocation so this low energy configurations will form and then as a result a sub grain boundaries will form so when i say low angle grain boundary that is also considered as a uh, a sub grain boundary so so what 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 recovery means is it, it it consists of too many activities which eventually reduces the defect density inside the system and reduce the energy energy of the system to the lower range right so these are all recovery when you say dynamic recovery all these activities are expected to operate in a continuous fashion as the deformation proceeds it is happening continuously it is not non stop that is why it is dynamic okay so we are talking about a room temperature deformation right now the same thing can happen at high temperature that means you can imagine that thermally activated process also will contribute to this dislocation dynamics then there again we will talk about dynamic recovery okay so the recovery means these are all the activities and the dynamic recovery means it acts simultaneously as the uh, deformation proceeds to at the very higher stresses so what i am trying to convey through this slide is this is the first step we are seeing in a, a deformation of a poly i mean single crystals how what are all the uh, you know microstructural events that was going to happen in a very very localized scale you no know, in terms of dislocations we are able to categorize them or describe them what are all the activities and then basically what what we are trying to explain we are trying to explain the stress response okay the stress response of a single crystal okay how it behaves and why it behaves and and what will, what what is the consequence of Uh, this uh, uh, deformation and so on okay so this is a uh, very basic and fundamental this idea these ideas should remain intact in our mind so that we can relate this with the other crystal system so already we are comparing this fcc with the bcc and bcc we are not going to see this kind of uh, well defined stage behavior 
Rather, it is the full stress strain curve is going to be similar to what is shown in the stage 3. That means the, the, the very beginning of the deformation itself will involve all the activities, the dislocation activities or recovery activities what we are seeing in the stage 3 in the BCC. That is how we should start, at least we should start thinking in those directions and then we will, we will get matured as we proceed and then the understanding will improve uh, once we start from here. Okay. So the two major processes by which uh, recovery occurs are cross, uh, cross slip and a dislocation climb. So that we also have seen what is climb, dislocation climb, right? In the edge dislocation, how it uh, moves up. It can move up or it can move down depending upon the circumstances. So the recovery uh, by itself can take place by two primary mechanisms called cross slip and a dislocation climb. Next comes the important uh, another mechanism called twinning. What is twinning? Okay, a crystal is said to be twinned when one portion of its lattice is a mirror image of the other. Okay, the the crystallographic plane of uh, reflection is known as the twin plane. So, you look at this uh, image. Uh, this uh, this is a, a crystal lattice of a cubic uh, system and this is 110 plane and what you are seeing here is a, a twin region which shows a, a twin plane 111 and then the twin direction 112 and, um, and then you can see this uh, atom displacement is uh, proportional to the uh, from where the twin plane starts right it, it's actually increasing from here the displacement increasing as you move from twin plane okay so this is a twin region and this is a kind of uh, a mirror image of uh, this and here is a mirror image of this lattice so this is I will give much more uh, descript description of this uh, in the next slide. Okay. Twins may be formed during the growth of the crystal or may be produced by mechanical twinning, which occurs by a homogeneous shear of successive planes of atoms by amount of the twinning vector parallel to the twin plane. Twin planes, vectors and the shear produced are given in table for uh, FCC BCC and HCP crystals. Okay, what are this? So, like a slip system, we have a twin system. You can say that. So, twin plane and direction in FCC 111 and 112 direction. This is a kind of amount of shear it can produce. You can measure the shear. This is 0 0.707. Okay. In BCC, it is a reverse 111. 112 planes and 111 direction and it also will produce a shear of equivalent to what is uh, being produced in FCC. But in HCP it is 10 bar 1 2 and the direction is 10 bar 1 bar 1. Examples are cadmium, zinc, magnesium, titanium, beryllium and then you can see that uh, the amount of uh, tuning shear produced by these uh, crystal systems or materials are significantly low compared to FCC and BCC. But it is not that uh, you know, uh, simple here. I will just uh, first describe this a little more uh, for your understanding then we will move on to the, the next uh, idea. So what is uh, the same thing? Uh, uh, cubic uh, 110 plane is uh, shown here and this is a twin plane and this is the polished surface uh, so this uh, plane is oriented uh, a little with an angle with the surface and then this is a shear force which is acting on this system and uh, this uh, 
one one zero plane is uh, you know it's it's on the plane of uh, screen here and the twin plane is uh, perpendicular to this plane of the screen and this this is this is what the description for this and then if you look at this uh, twinned region now you see that um, since the twin plane is perpendicular to the plane of the screen computer screen you can now see that this twin region also must be yeah, an offset i mean you can say that it it is per, it would have come out of the screen right if you look at uh, reality it, it should have this twin region should have come out of this plane of the screen computer screen and then it also has created some a huge step on the uh, above the polished uh, surface so so these descriptions uh, will help you to imagine the three dimensionally how this things uh, takes place okay so now let us assume this polished surface is a plane aa and this is a, a twin plane which is uh, again you know this twin region has come out of this uh, screen and then you, there are three circles one is open circle and uh, a circle with a dashed line and the circle with a solid uh, completely filled circle okay so the open circle is uh, untwinned uh, lattice the the dashed the circle the circle with the dashed line is the original position of the lattice point before it uh, pinned so you can see that uh, you can see that uh, the the displacement of the atom you can see from here to here and here it is proportional to the the distance between uh, distance from the twin plane so you can see that it is uh, the di displacement here is small slightly increased and slightly increased and like that so it is proportional to the twin plane distance basically you can you can just understand like that so that it is easy to visualize and uh, another important point is uh, suppose after uh, it is a kind of a, a, a surface relief you can say see this is a polished surface that means this uh, twin has created a step so it is a kind of a, a relief surface relief so literally you can uh, polish this and then you can remove this by polishing it will get removed but still you will see the twin because this orientation okay the twin orientation since it has come out of this uh, uh, plane of the screen it is it is completely different orientation as compared to the untwinned uh, region so even if you remove this portion above the polishing surface by uh, polishing after etching you will be still able to see this uh, twin region because of the different orientation so in a polished surface and by etching you will be able to visualize the twins so these are all some of the very basic idea about the twinning so what are the technical aspects let us now look at them little more closely the twinning can happen by two ways one is by annealing another is by deformation so the one which we are now looking at is mechanical twinning is by the shear force right so uh, the mechanical twinning differs from the slip so now we, since we are talking about deformation mechanisms we are comparing uh, twinning versus slip okay the twinned portion of the grain is a mirror image of the original lattice whereas the slip portion of the grain has the same orientation as the original grain very important point Okay, just now I demonstrated to you how this orientation is uh, going to help because uh, even by etching you can see it. Okay, slip consists of uh, a shear displacement of an entire block of the crystal, whereas the twinning is a uniform shear strain. Please understand this. This is very uniform shear strain. You look at the whole deformed region, a twinned region. It is a it is a cooperative movement of many atoms okay but not to the extent of uh, the slip vector but it is only a fraction of that uh, slip vector or inter uh, atomic spacing okay that we will see 
the direction of the slip may be either positive or negative while the direction of the shear in twinning is limited to that which produces that twin image so that it is clear now very important point is the stress required to produce twinning tends to be higher and less sensitive to temperature than that necessary for the slip very very important point the stress required to produce a twinning is higher okay it is still uncertain whether there is a critical resolved shear stress for twinning another important point when we are comparing two mechanisms slip and twinning about slip we talked too many things and it was very clear we established the mechanisms and how it takes place you know shear plane establishment we looked at octahedral planes you know and then critical resolved shear stress also we have seen that it is a characteristic of a material so everything is clear but here still we don't know the whether there is a critical resolved shear stress for twinning the stress required to propagate twinning is appreciably less than that required to initiate it okay mechanical twinning usually occurs when the applied stress is high as a result of strain hardening or low temperatures or in hcp metals when the resolved shear stress on the basal plane is low so this is a very uh, you know fundamental idea and important idea because you cannot just like that uh, Form a twin. It requires some conditions. What are the conditions? Applied stress need to be at higher strain as a result of strain hardening. Okay. Or at low temperature. So either it should be temperature effect or the stress effect. Or the crystal system itself. If it is a very different crystal system like HCP, where the the number of slip systems available for slip is limited it's only basal slip right and it's not like in fcc where you have large number of high density planes right they are not here in fcp thus a thin lamellar twins called nauman bands may form in the iron loaded rapidly at very low temperatures this is one example how this forms since slip can occur only on the basal plane in many of these metals twinning can both contribute to the bulk deformation itself and an important reorient the lattice more favorably for the basal slip so this is uh, again uh, now we are trying to describe the the deformation in the hcb kind of systems where the number of uh, slip systems or favorable slip systems are limited twinning is believed to occur by a, a dislocation mechanism okay although twinning dislocations have not been identified experimentally such a process would differ from that for a slip in two ways the Burgess vector of a twinning dislocation does not produce a unit lattice translation and this would not bring a lattice back in register so this point uh, is a very valid point and uh, this is how we have been describing the slip because the moment the slip takes place and uh, the lattice will experience a unit uh, lattice translation by a lattice translation vector Okay, the translation is by means of a lattice translation vector, but this is not going to happen while twinning. Okay, each plane above the twin plane is displaced by a single twin vector. In the mechanisms proposed for twinning in FCC and BCC crystals, the twinning dislocation is one part of the dissociated slip dislocation, which can spiral upwards over successive planes when when pinned at a screw dislocation normal to the slip plane so this is a kind of uh, you know a hypothesis how uh, how twin can get generated okay the source of this twinning dislocation is most easily visualized in an fcc crystal for the slip and the twin planes are both 111 planes this is one advantage in fcc because here we see that both 
twin systems and slip systems, we have seen that 111 planes are going to be the primary planes. So, what people believed is, if you look at this octahedral plane, the slip vector is uh, a by 2, 1, 0, bar 1, can dissociate into a by 6, 1, 1, 2 bar and a by 6, 2, 1 bar, 1 bar. Okay. So, this particular slip vector can cause the or can be a twin vector in an FCC. This is one hypothesis. To identify the origin of the twinning, this is one kind of hypothesis. A slip dissociation of a type A by 2, 1, 0, bar 1 dissociates into two partial dislocations. So that's what is shown here. And A by 6, 2, bar 1, bar 1 partial, which remains on the slip plane, and an A by 6, 1, 1, bar 2 dissociation, or a dislocate, sorry, dislocation, which can produce twinning. So this is uh, a, a slip vector, or a slip vector. In, in, here it is a twin vector, it can be a twin vector in FCC crystal, which can produce uh, or can cause a twin. Okay. So, what, uh, what I am trying to say is, uh, though it is not uh, well established, the origin of uh, dislocation activity in twinning, so some of the hypothesis is available based on the experimental observations. Okay, some hypothesis. Okay, we will uh, stop here. Uh, we will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Okay, thank you.